Hi, welcome to Juice Bar. Today we're gonna mix some forgotten cocktails. And by forgotten cocktails, I mean cocktails I made at the time I shoot the video and then I never made them again for one reason or another. Now, is it just because I'm lazy or they were not that great? Actually, I think all these cocktails were pretty good, if I remember correctly. So, we have a list of 10 cocktails. My wife, she's gonna choose one at a time. We mix it, we drink it, we tell you if we think it's still good, and then we go <laughs> until until we have energy. <laughs> <laughs> until the limit of alcohol capacity. Yes. <laughs> so please make your first choice. Ooh, there are a lot of them. <laughs> but hold on. Oh, this must be good. Last cor corpse. Last corpse. Last corpse. Okay. Start with gin. You know my favorite gin. Yeah, so I'm just gonna gather all the ingredients. Okay, lime, lemon, cocky, then chateros, maraschino. What can it go wrong? It's chateros and maraschino, luxardo, and cocky americano. Like, yes, no, a, why you never made this? I never made it again because I'm not a fan of green chateros in here. I never. If I, ah, it's not the normal chateros. It's green chateros. Why? What's the normal chateros? It's not their two kind. <laughs> we only have this chateros, the green one. Yeah, I thought you don't like it. I'm not a fan. Uh -huh. So last corpse, if I remember correctly, is my variation between. Uh, a last word and, a, and something a, corpse. There's something corpse co survivor. Ah, corpse, corpse survivor, survivor number two. Uh, because I'm not a fan of either. I made a video a long time ago for Halloween where I was all bloody and uh, I mixed this in between recipe which I thought was pretty good. Uh, let's get down to mixing it. We're gonna need both lime juice and lemon juice. So lime is gonna be the Japanese tea cup. So let's see. So 50 milliliters of lemon juice. And 50 milliliters of lime juice. 50 milliliters of cocky americano. Precious. Yeah, I just stored out a new bottle because we are running out. And I use it all the time. Then 50 milliliter of Luxardo Maraschino. Our favorite Luxardo. Yeah, I love Maraschino. Mm. And then 50 milliliter of Short Rose Vert. Yeah, you can see it's a long time I don't use it. It gets stuck. With the sugar. I thought I liked it. I don't know. It's. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of something else. I mean, I like it in the right cocktail. Mm. Like, I guess this one is gonna be, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And then 30 milliliters of. Uh, in the original, I used Saint Laurent Canadian gin, which was an herbal gin. I don't have anything quite similar right now open. So. Let's just use the Hendrix and hope for the best. It should be okay. Yeah. Cannot go wrong with Hendrix, no? Uh, yeah, usually no. It's really versatile. Let's get some ice in our shaker. So let's get this bad boy shake. Thank you. After I was checking a video I made uh, at the really beginning of a channel. Yeah. And, and uh, I noticed my shake did evolve and it did get a bit better mm. over time. Good. I think. Let's double strain in our shield coop. And I bet I probably decorated with a maraschino cherry because I oh, always do. Oh, of course, do. yes. You love that thing. So let's put one and one, two. 
And there you go, a last corpse. Please, have the first sip. Hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Smells really citrusy. Mmm. I really like it. Can I try it? Yes. Yeah, it's like two years I don't try this. I don't know why you never made it. It's a really good cocktail. It's good. It's pretty sharp. Sour. Sour? Mm hmm It could use maybe a tiny bit more sugar, but it's overall nice. I like it um, like this. Yeah. Because I don't like it a lot of sugar. It's refreshy. Yeah, it's really refreshing. Yeah. I'm gonna have a cherry. I really wonder why you never made this. Because it's okay. a lot of effort. Uh, <laughs> I guess you can do... What's the... Um, I guess less effort version of... Um, uh, I usually gimlet? Do a gimlet? Gimlet? I do a casino. Casino? Mm. Because they require a bit less ingredients. Yes. And the flavors is yeah. ninety percent of the way there. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I, can I need tell. both lime and lemon. The chartreuse, which apparently was at the behind the bar, so that's why maybe it was just, I, it's just too much effort taking it out. But you also I, need the cocky, which sometimes we run out. But I think you can tell the difference from gimlet, like yeah. it's, it's like there's a depth in it. Yeah, it's a different cocktail. Yeah, yeah. But but it's yes, it's towards that that kind of category. Yeah, it's a gin sour, but mm. yeah, it's more of a closer to the last word. And now I don't know why I didn't really like the last word. There is a video where I explain everything with a whiteboard while I'm dripping blood. So uh, I'm gonna link it. <laughs> <laughs> you can check that one. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty good cocktail. Mm. Yeah, it's just a bit of effort. Good choice, huh? Mm. Mm. So. Let's cross out the last corpse from our list. <laughs> okay. Here you go. Now, yeah. usually I like the check because it gives me a sense of completion, but maybe it's like work, uh, work well, thing. It's okay. It's Japanese. No, Actually, no. Yeah, it's not Japanese. It's the work thing, you it's know? It's a Japanese thing. No. One thing I learned when I check. came to Japan, one of the first Monica things does it too. you learn when you come to Japan, and uh, in Europe, when you have a box, there are several options, and you mark it, and you do a cross. But cross in Japan, it uh, means dame, no. So you usually put a check mark in Japan. Check. That's a really significant cultural difference, which you might have experienced if you ever played PlayStation Japanese games, because until PlayStation 5, PlayStation Japanese game had a different arrangement of buttons from the international version. And that's because the Batsu, which is the cross, means no in Japan, mm -hmm. while in other countries means yes. And wait, where did I put it? No, it's behind, in the bottom. Ah, it's... you can double cup it. I didn't know. Maybe that's another cultural difference too. <laughs> <laughs> we are still finding out. Do you want the cherry? No. You don't want the cherry. So, better for me, two cherries. <laughs> you love cherries. So choose the, the next one. Mm, okay. Is this something we drank in uh, Dublin this summer? Nope. No. Mm. We drank something with cognac, but it wasn't that one. Okay. Mmm. Eh, do Ah, deadly seduction. Wow, okay. This is my angel face variation. Yeah, I didn't make it since I made it the first time. Why? Because I never think about it. I have the easiest job. I choose and then I drink. What's the gin that's specified there? Ungava? What's Ungava. the Ungava? It was the yellow gin from Canada. No, we don't have it anymore. So let me get something else. I, okay, let's clean up. I guess we are going up with hundreds of bottles. Showing off how much bottles you have. And this is going to be a steel drink. Ah, no shaking. How do you know which one is shaking and which one is stirring? In general, if there is a juice, you want to shake it. Okay. If there are only alcoholic ingredients and bitters like a Manhattan or a Martini, mm. you stir it. 
Of course, there are exceptions, and you can do whatever you want in Vienna. I don't think it's a critical mm. difference. No, actually, if you have a juice, it's definitely better if you shake them, in my opinion. But if you have like a martini and you want to shake it, well, that's your choice. You're just going to get more dilution faster. And it's going to look probably a bit more cloudy when you pour it in the glass. But besides that, uh, yeah, it's not that big of a difference. Okay, so this is going to be equal parts. Amaretto di Saronno. Amaretto! Natsukashi. 30 milliliters. It's the longest time I don't have amaretto. 30 milliliters of Calvados. And we have with Christian Druan. Christian Druan, my wife's favorite gin. One of my favorite gin. We should go and visit France. Christian Druan. I don't know. Is it closer? I have to no where you're from. Which region are they? It says there, Kodrai Rabut. I have no idea what it is. At least, you, at least you can pronounce it. No, I didn't pronounce it right. Um, 30 milliliters of gin. I'm using this greater than London dry gin. Which I always... Do you think greater than is the brand? Because to me, by the way it's written, I tend to say greater than London. Like it's bigger than London. No, but it's just greater than anything. No? Yeah. Yeah. Greater yeah. than. Greater than. That London dry gin is a London dry gin, no? It's a style. Yes. You're not supposed to connect a greater than London dry gin. No? Yeah. It's, to me, it's greater than London dry gin. <laughs> and we give this a stir. We are filming this in the last days of uh, 2023. How was your year? This year? Okay, I was gonna wait until tomorrow to do all the reflection. This year has been uh, interesting. <laughs> okay, but would you say that 2020 was also interesting? Ah, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. Twenty twenty was dramatic because we had the COVID. Right? Yeah. And he, and you got stuck in Italy for three months. Yeah. And I was here alone. So that's more I would say like really dramatic. No, this year I got to travel to a country I've never traveled before. So that was nice. Which was? Lausanne. Switzerland. And India. And India. Yeah. Where you got this gene? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And in fact. Uh, uh, maybe Switzerland closer to Italy, maybe, you know, we could have got a chance, but India, it's one of, I don't know, lifetime experience. It's uh, nothing I've ever imagined until I, you know, you, you see it there. Sorry, that was a really too simple word to describe. Interesting, but there's just so much thought that I need to put it in. And I cannot do it if you put me on the spot like that. That was not... Uh, part of the gig you know like i was supposed to just enjoy just pick the cocktail drink it and that was what i was here for not to really reflect my 2023 yeah, but that's the thing about these videos the stakes are never been so low because you can cut everything i'm just gonna show you what i want anyway now we are gonna express some lemon peel on this drink and oh, no, you do this. We are gonna be done. And there you go, a deadly seduction. The name is the English translation of the Italian title of the movie Angel Face. Mm -hmm. For the review of the movie, check out my original video. Go ahead. Cheers! Mmm. <laughs> oh <laughs> my nose came out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's nice. I actually imagine it'll be really strong and powerful because it's just a lot of alcohol and not much dilution, I guess, from a uh, juice. But it's it's actually not that bad. But then you can taste the sweetness of um, amaretto. Mmm. Nice. Oh, this is a good drink. Yeah? Yeah, this is a real classic. It tastes classic. 
doesn't it? Mm. Like uh, you're in an old movie. Yeah, something you can have at the Grand Hotel. Yeah. By the lake. It's nicely balanced between sweet and uh, dry, and you can get all the complexity hiding between the amaretto and the calvados. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, we should do this more often. And it's not it's not hard. There's not no, much no. simple, you know. Yeah, in fact, ingredients. This one is really easy actually. <laughs> again, why you didn't make it again? <laughs> yeah, it's just a free ingredient cocktail. Ah, yeah. and you didn't even have to shake, no? I just, yeah, so something that just doesn't stick in my mind. I don't remember. Yeah, this is a good one. It's really easy, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in the meanwhile, we broke out the snacks <laughs> to go on with the video. So we have some uh, truffle chips, some mixed nuts, fancy, from Costco, <laughs> <laughs> and some uh, olives which are gonna carry us through this journey. So what's your next choice? Okay, so I've been choosing gin and I'm, you know, I have this bias <laughs> towards gin because I really love gin. So I think I need to walk away from gin for one second. And that leads me to 1910. Good choice. So cognac, mezcal, ah cognac, we need cognac. Where? Oh that one, Hennessy. Hennessy. I think I can reach it. You can reach? Mm -hmm. So here's the thing viewers, I'm technically taller than my wife, but she's way longer with her arms, so she can reach places I cannot. Yeah, look! Look! How long is she? <laughs> arms. I was told the... Uh, Having long arms is good for boxing because you can reach, you know. Also for uh, climbing. Yeah, in fact, I, I had a, a year or so I was climbing, how say, uh, not marbling, how say, snorkeling. Rock climbing. Yeah, the one you do in the gym is called bouldering. Bouldering. I was bouldering and I really liked it after I saw free solo. Mm, that's a good one. Because it's really fun, it exercises your body and your mind. I suck the book because I'm short and my arms are short and my hands are small. Okay, enough talking. Let's get down to mixing. So the 1910 name comes from the Mexican Revolution. Mm. But have you ever heard about the Mexican Revolution? When they, the farmers, they were saying stuff like, we should distribute all the land owned by the noble and rich mm, people mm. between everybody. Yeah, yeah. Reform Agraria, it was called in Italian. It's a agrarian reform. Agricultural reform. Exactly. And what are your feelings about I think in my original video I was talking about how sometimes here in Tokyo mm. I feel like there should be an agrarian reform for land because there are mm. a few people that own a bunch of land and their only quality of these people is they were here which used to be countryside and they were lucky enough to get a piece of land and now they can just live without working all their life. Is that right? Okay, this is not gonna go on air. <laughs> it's a philosophical question. No, it's not a philosophical question. No? Like, if people should get what they have from okay. birthright or they should get what they deserve by what they do in their life? Ah, uh, then I believe the latter. Yeah, so we should have an agrarian reform. Why our neighbor is a millionaire and he never worked a day in his life? Somehow, um, you know, there are some laws that, you know, like they, they add high succession tax so that, you know, it's meant to be able to redistribute unless, so unless you work hard, you, you technically cannot afford those succession tax 
so it just doesn't carry on but there's numerous ways you can work around that rules and you know but I, I must say it's not like 100% but if let's say if I work hard in my lifetime build something and if it's like taken away fully then what's the purpose of me working hard yes exactly but we are talking about people that have land maybe the la people who has a land their parents might have worked really hard i guess you're right it's just not the case here in tokyo mm. but yeah i see your point yeah that's why it's an interesting mm. question because yeah. Yeah, yeah. you have both point of views and yeah. both point of views are valid mm. and you can get point of views on each side it's yeah. just of course in mexican revolution it was like a bunch of uh, i guess spanish overlord mm. that just stole the land and then people wanted the land and it was their right to cultivate the land mm. and i think they were right uh, let me check is this drink served on the rocks or not yeah that's i don't remember it's served straight up so oh wow Let's strain this in our third chilled glass, I guess. That's it. This is the drink. Have a sip. Thank you. 1910. A lot of controversial conversations uh, among... Uh, well, it's not controversial. <laughs> it's just, like, interesting. Ooh, mezcal. This is strong. Actually... Metzcal. Metzcal. But about that uh, succession law you were talking about. Yes. Have you seen with me that uh, George Clooney movie when they are in Hawaii and there is a... George Clooney Hawaii movie, yes. But what was that? Yeah, they have a big plot of land and there are several brother and sister. They are supposed to succeed it. Mm -hmm. But I think then in the end... Uh, Wow, uh, this is good. But it's mezcal. Wow, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, this 1910 is really good. Holy <laughs> yeah, you know why I don't make it more often? Because my wife, she's not really into smoky stuff. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't yeah, like... Yeah, when I said mezcal, I was like, smoke. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't like the mezcal. She doesn't like the pita de whiskey. Mm. So that's why. Have a, have a baby taste. Oh, wow, this is excellent. I didn't remember mezcal to be so smoky. What is mezcal? Most mezcal are smoky. Mezcal is tequila, no? No. So tequila is a really strict protocol. You have to use a certain kind of agave in a certain region. Yeah, like Franciacolta. Yes, yeah, a really or cognac. Mm -hmm. It's a really Champagne, strict yeah. protocol. Mm -hmm. Mezcal is everything else. What? most mezcal ended up being is made locally by small farmers using whatever they have and smoking the agave uh, actually i don't know what do we use to smoke what, what's the i forgot but is is all the mezcal like most of them are smoky like all, all of them are smoky i think most of the famous one but it doesn't technically it doesn't have, have to, to be, be. It just mezcal mm -hmm. is just the bigger category. Mm -hmm. Like you say, there is champagne mm -hmm. and there is sparkling wine. Right, like so champagne is inside the sparkling wine, yeah. right? So, so it's mezcal is mezcal and tequila. Yes, oh. exactly. So maybe, maybe once I had a mezcal which was not as smoky. It also depends on the amount of the amount of mezcal you're using in a cocktail. Sometimes it's just used as a note. You oh. Use just a teaspoon to give a touch of smoke. In this case, it's 22.5 milliliters or oh. three quarter of an ounce. Oh. And I use this uh, mezcal from Durango. This is actually really nice and reasonably priced for the, what it is because it's a single estate thing made in a small... Uh, by Mezcalero Antonio Panuco called El Tigre. El Tigre. El Tigre. Tigre. Which uh, is the coolest name ever. I don't know what you wanted me to say. <laughs> I'm using a ruler. I'm going to use a ruler to... 
Okay, okay.